welcome into the broadcast today. We are going to have a time around the Word of the living God. All I know is in these sessions, the power of God's coming here so strong that if it's done in you like it's done in me, we're wanting to stand up and shout and hoop and holler, and we've had to control, control ourselves for the sake of everybody watching and our own self to get the job done. But God is a good God, and I'm telling you this. When the Word of God wants you to stand up and you get so excited in the physical, what it really means is the inner man has been standing up in faith by the power of Almighty God. So that's the real objective of everything we're doing here is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And when you walk in faith, you can walk in the victory. The Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I want to say once again, as we continue to pick up in this series here, that uh, I ask the Lord, Lord, help me to help the people. What, what will help them the most? And He knows what the people need at any given time. There's many things we need to know, many things that we don't know, many things he'll reveal to us and we'll teach on from time to time. And the reason we do that is all centered around one thing, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now what that means is it's extremely difficult. Well, in fact, it's impossible to have faith for something that you don't know or haven't heard. In fact, if you've been taught against it, it's the opposite. Not only can you not have faith for it because you're ignorant, you won't release your faith for it because you don't believe God wants you to have it. So faith begins where the will of God is known. And there's a lot of people over the years, they're struggling to receive from God. And honestly, and I understand, I love you guys. You're here. We're in church. We're in a TV studio. Uh, I pastor church. I travel all over the world and preach to Christians. It's what we do. Minister to ministers. It's what we do. So please hear my heart. This is by no means derogatory of any church anywhere in any way. Thank God for every good thing that's going on in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But sometimes when I look back, I think about early in my walk, how ignorant I was. I didn't have enough sense to get in and out of the rain. And you know, people that don't know anything can't tell anything body else what they don't know and if you don't know something you don't know you don't know it and that's why the scripture says in Hosea 4 6 my people perish for a lack of knowledge amen God didn't say the world perishes for a lack of knowledge he said my people now I've talked about this before it's not new to some of you who are our partners and probably not new to those of you who are watching on television but here's the thing Jesus said if you continue in my word you'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. We can't be made free by truth we don't know. The objective of the truth is to know it. And what is the source of the truth that will make us free? Jesus said, John 8, 31, If you continue in my word, then you're my disciples. Indeed, you shall know the truth. The truth will make you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So this isn't a temporary freedom. This isn't a managing a crisis but a deliverance from oppression. Those are two different things. God's Word's not going to teach you how to manage it and keep a stiff upper lip just so you can make it through life. God's Word is actually going to give you real life. He's going to give you the abundant life Jesus died for you to receive in manifested form. So you don't have all these nagging fears and tethers and torments and dysfunctions that you war with for decades on end. No, He wants you free, and He wants you free now. I'm thinking so much about that woman in the Gospel of Luke chapter 16 where she was bowed over with the spirit of infirmity for 18 years and he looked upon the religious crowd and they looked at him. Now here's what they wondered. Is he going to heal on the Sabbath day? In other words, they had almost no compassion or love for wanting this woman to be healed. They're, wanting, they're looking for something he's going to do where they can judge him. You see? Now, love wants people free. Amen. Now, here's my whole point behind that. Love loves the truth. First Corinthians 13 says, The love of God rejoices in the truth and hates iniquity. When you get people that are so stubborn that they want to maintain their appearance in front of other people in the face of truth that contradicts what they've taught for 20 years, 
and they're doing it to save their reputation, then clearly the motive is selfishness and not love. Because if truth sets people free and love wants people free, then love is going to be the seeker of all truth. In other words, I'm going to want to know, even if I'm wrong, I'm going to want to be corrected. Amen. And there's so many misconceptions about faith, and yet the Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So I asked the Lord, what will help the people the most? And, and he said, continue down this line of teaching them the substance of faith. I know why he said that. Because if we can get hold of the law of faith and operate it like we did when we received Jesus, we found out in these sessions that the way we received Jesus is the same exact way that we receive every promise from God. In fact, why don't we pick up right there in Romans chapter 8, verse 31 and 32. We looked at it at, in the last time we were together. And it says that what then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who could be against us? Meaning, who could successfully be our enemy? And he says, here's why we can so boldly say this. If God be for me, who, tell me who, can be against me? I will boldly say God is for me. If God is for me, tell me who can be against me? Now, what gives me that information? The very next verse. For God, he, God the Father, that spared not his own son. Do you see this? But delivered him up for us all. How shall he not also with him freely give us how many things? That means when we got Jesus, we got everything God has. Every promise of God in Christ is yes and amen. So if I have it, it demonstrates God's will is for me to have everything. If he wills for me to have Jesus, it means he wills for everything to be mine. He gave it with him. Oh, that brings a person to a place of boldness when they know the will of God is their healing. The will of God is their prosperity. The will of God is a functional family. The will of God is deliverance from this attack of the devil. The will of God is recovery from this car wreck like it never happened or whatever came against us. God's will is to bring us out Nothing missing, nothing broken like it never happened. Oh, God is a good God. And friend, you're watching today. You need to know God wants to bless you today. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord will come on you and overtake you. They'll run you down. He's doing his best to bless us. Deuteronomy 23, 5 is really clear about this. It says that the Lord our God turned the curse into a blessing because he loved us. Now, here we've opened tonight talking about the love of God. Amen. The love of God. Yeah, I'll do that, Lord. I just heard the Spirit of God say for me to look at something, and I want you to look at it with me. Galatians chapter 5. This fits right into where we've been on the substance of faith. So let's, uh, let's just look at this and pick up where we've been, connecting all of these things together by the Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 in the King James reads this way. For in Christ Jesus, or Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith, which worketh by love. The Amplified Bible says that faith is activated, energized, expressed, and working through love. My favorite translation of this particular verse is the New International Version. It says in the New International Version that in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision, I love this phrase, has any value. Galatians 5, 6 in the NIV. Circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. That means all this religious tradition, all of the gyrations that happen in ceremony to try to get God to do something, according to the Scripture, have no value. 
The traditions of men make the word of God of none effect. And people perish for a lack of knowledge because they're ignorant. Now, God wants us to teach on the substance of faith because if it's the way we receive Jesus, and it is, if we're born again, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, By grace are you saved through faith. Amen. By grace are you saved, how? Through faith. So we receive Jesus by faith, through faith. And that, it says, is the gift of God. It's not of ourselves. Not of ourselves. What's not of ourselves? The faith. That means you possess something that didn't originate with you. That means God gave you something to access His grace that delivered you and me from the dominion of darkness and transferred me into a whole other kingdom. Woo! And Romans 10 says, here's how we got it. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. For if in our heart we believe Jesus was raised from the dead and we confess with our mouth, he's Lord, we shall be saved. How do we get saved? We believed it in our heart and confessed it with our mouth. And Ephesians 2 says, it's how we got it. By grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we see very clearly here, faith is the channel, the economy, the currency, the transference mechanism, the substance, the only thing with enough kingdom, spiritual, eternal value to activate the grace that delivered me from the devil's hold on my life. And I got born again by this force of faith. By using this faith, my faith, and it wasn't of myself. It came to me. Somebody say, it came to me. That's why Romans 10, 17 is so big. Yeah, I'll do that. I, I keep hearing the Lord. I'm so stirred up. <laughs> Glory to God, i got to wash myself here. Hmm. Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh. Whoo! So then faith cometh. So then faith cometh. Faith is transferable. Woo! We know it works this way. It works for the Roman centurion this way. Notice what happened. He met Jesus and said, I'm not worried that this you should, you should what? Come under my roof. Speak the word only. My servant shall be healed. For I am also a man under authority. I say to one, go. Say, come. come. Go. go. Do. do. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another one, do this, and he does it. All right, so come, go, do. Faith causes things to come. Faith causes things to go. Faith causes things to be done. Now, as we're talking about this, this is a big deal because we're talking about a heavenly substance here. Now, faith is the substance. So then faith cometh, Romans 10, 17. So then faith cometh. It cometh. That means it gets transferred. Something came into me. Not of yourselves. By grace are you saved through faith. Not of yourselves, Ephesians 2, 8 says. Something came into you from somewhere else. A substance from heaven. God's own faith from another world. When you heard the gospel, faith came. So when those words were spoken, faith came. And when faith came, the substance of heaven came to your life. When you had enough faith to receive Jesus as Lord, heaven moved into your spirit. Faith has the substance to transfer all of the eternal DNA of heaven down inside of you, and the Word will become flesh and dwell among us. That's why faith healed that woman with issue of blood. That's why when those two blind men followed him, he said, according to your faith, be it done unto you. You believe I'm able to do this? They said, we believe, and their eyes popped open. Faith has eyes in it. Faith has livers in it. Faith has money in it. Faith is the river of the economy of God that has all of heaven in it. And faith has the ability to receive every promise of God. And you have it, and I have it. God has dealt. We just, he wanted to get heaven in us. So he gave us faith. 
Faith is what grabs what belongs to us out of heaven and transfers it. Glory be to God. It's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of everything we can't see with our eyes right now. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. So faith will cause things to come. Faith will cause things to go. We see this in Mark 11, 23 and 24. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed. Well, that's pushing things away. Amen? And don't doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. So faith will push things away from you. But verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them. That's bringing things to yourself. Faith that calls things to come. Faith that calls things to go. Faith will cause things to be done. It is the substance by which God Almighty, the architect of us who were created in His image, created the universe. Hallelujah. That's the way our world's going to be framed also. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let's, let's just talk about this briefly as our time allows here uh, tonight. <clears throat> Dealing with, in Galatians chapter 5 here, he says, For in Christ Jesus, now the circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. None of that religious tradition has any value. The only thing that counts, New International Version, is the only thing that counts is faith, which works, right? And expresses itself through love. Now, the most important thing is to realize, like this woman with the issue of blood, not, not issue of blood, well, that's one example. Leper's another example. In fact, if faith is the transference mechanism that moves things, then let's talk about this leper. I, I just sense that this would be a good place to go. In Mark chapter 1, I'm going to show you something. Because faith will transfer. Faith will move things. Faith is an actual tangible substance that moves the goods and services of heaven and transfers them from the unseen realm to the seen realm. It has authority in both worlds. Mark chapter 1. And I want you to notice this verse in verse uh, 40. There came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If you will, you can make me clean. Now, in talking about the substance of faith, one of the things we've identified is faith begins where the will of God is known. We've nailed down some ideas in previous sessions that Jesus said in Hebrews 10, 7, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me, I come to do thy will, O God. Here's what we said. It's very clear to us. The book, the volume of the book, is God's will. Amen. And Jesus said, I didn't come to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. So when you see how Jesus responds to people, it settles the will of God for all men forever. Now, this leper had the same problem that many people have. He knows God can do it, that God's able, but will he? Jesus, before this leper would move into a position to receive, had to fix that nagging question. I'm unclean. Is it God's will to heal me? I know he can. I've seen him do it for others. Is it his will to do it for me? Once that gets settled, faith is not a hard thing. That's the, that, that is the linchpin of the seed that causes faith to come. The revelation that's the will of God for me to have everything he's promised now. That's why Romans 8, 31 and 32 is so significant. Because if God gave Jesus and wouldn't spare him, how shall he not with him also freely give us everything else? Once we get settled that it's God's will that I be saved, Forgiven, delivered, healed, and that I didn't earn it. It's not of myself. That he did it because he loved me. God so loved the world that he gave. That every grace gift is a love gift. Once I know he wants me healed because he loves me, not because I've earned it, it is so easy for me to believe he'll do it, even if I haven't been perfect. I'm so glad to know that he loves me. And boy, when I get that settled, it settles his will to bless me. 
Amen? And that's what was going on with this leper here. It says <clears throat> concerning this leper, beseeching him, kneeling down, Lord, if you will. Notice his question was not about, I know you can. He didn't say, if you can. He said, if you will. So the question was about the will of God. Jesus moved with compassion. I want you to hear me. Moved with compassion. It was love that moved him. It was love that healed this leper. Moved with compassion, he put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. So he settled the issue here, and understanding this for us is so huge because we can see then that love moves the hand of God to deliver the oppressed. That God so loves people, he wants them free. Now, when I can get that understanding, it's easy for me to believe he would release his power to deliver them from the enemy because he wants them free. Not because they've earned it, but because he loves them. It's God's love that moves his hand to bless people. Hallelujah. Amen. That is such a big, big thing to know. So we see then that the circumcision or uncircumcision doesn't have any value. What does have value? Faith. As it expresses itself, operating, working, activated, and energized by love as a motive. Huh. So it's so important to see because once we get so clear about this, it's not hard to understand why a lot of people seem like they're in faith and they're confessing and doing all the right things, but they don't see any manifestation. Because too many people are driven by the wrong motive to believe God. You know, they, they often want God to heal them because they're afraid they're not going to have enough money to pay the doctor. Or they're afraid to have surgery. You know, you'd think you'd like to say, well, you know, I'm believing God's going to heal me and it doesn't matter how it comes. Healing's a blessing of God. Well, we can say all those right things, but the truth is a lot of people are afraid they're not coming out of that operation. <laughs> Something bad's going to happen. I'll get a blood clot. It'll go to my lung. I'm, I'm afraid. So I want God to heal me. Well, listen, if you're afraid you're going to get a blood clot and die on the operating table, you don't have the faith to get healed by God. If we can't have enough faith that we'll... The, Really, understand. We, <laughs> just trying to be. I'm trying to help folks get to the place, friend. God loves you. Oh my my my! How He wants to bless you today in Jesus' name. It all started here, over 35 years ago. God revealed Himself to me that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God of miracles today as He was in Bible days. And that was only the beginning place of Lori and I dedicating our lives to him. 35 years, 420 months, 1,825 weeks, 12,775 days, 306,600 hours, 18,410,000 minutes. What does that time equal? Five continents, 50 nations, thousands of miracles, and millions of people touched by the good news of Jesus. It is all about the people. Today, through Harvest International Ministries ministerial affiliation, the sun never sets on our voice being heard around the world. The Lord is giving us a thousand points of light, each point being another ministry gift that the Lord has partnered with us to go beyond us. The ministry of Tracy and Lori Harris and HIM it's not about what we can get from you, but what we can get to you. The faithfulness of our partners allows people around the world to be ministered to by multifaceted platforms of reproducing revelation knowledge, such as television, internet radio, website, printed page and books, monthly partner letters, crusades, tent and church meetings, local churches, downloads, CDs, DVDs, and so much more. How can you be a part? Partner with him.
your monthly seed goes directly into the reproduction of Revelation knowledge. This whole ministry is dedicated to sending the light of the gospel of Jesus into a darkened world. Revelation knowledge is the center pole of HIM. We are believing for three heavenly grants into three areas of the ministry. One, we are currently believing for our next airplane, a Cessna Citation 650 series, so that we can go faster and further to reach more people. We must speed the seed of the gospel. Two, we are believing to reach more people through our media ministry. The Lord has instructed us to go on more television stations, to write more books, have more messages available, and to build a better website. On top of that, the Lord said to do it where anyone can come on our website and listen to a message that will change their life in their time of need as a seed. The Lord has imparted these life-changing truths into Tracy and Lori's lives for over 35 years. And with your monthly partnership seed, we can send this revelation knowledge to people all around the world at no charge. Anyone with an internet connection can download these programs or messages and have their life completely changed. Three, we now own 70 acres of land across the street from our current ministry headquarters. The Lord has instructed us to build a place for Him to be able to touch other people. That will come through a partner center, a Bible school, a worship center, and many, many more buildings. God wants to touch people, and they want to touch Him. You can be a part of building a complex where the sun will never set on His ministry to people. The question is not will these things happen, the question is will you be a part? Will you stretch forth your hand to help a hurting humanity? Will you help speed the seed of the gospel around the world? Partner with him. Thank you for watching Experience Him. If this message has ministered to you and you would like more information or to contact Harvest International Ministries, write to us at the address on the screen. Or please visit us online at tracyharris.tv. Join us as we go from vision to victory by helping this generation reach its destiny through teaching, preaching, and healing the nations.